skinless horse demons, death spirits, ghouls that lurk in the shadows of your room at night. These are 10 eerie legends from ancient civilizations. Do you ever still have that small little voice in the back of your head warning you not to step out of bed late at night in case some ghoulish entity is waiting underneath to grab you by the ankles and drag you under. Tales of monsters dwelling in closets and under beds have been told since the dawn of time across cultures all around the world. For Germans, the boogeyman is known as Bootsman. In some stories, he appears as a goblin. In others, he's a more formless, shadowy entity. But his purpose is always the same, stealing misbehaving youngsters. Parents would warn their young ones that if they didn't go to bed on time or got up in the middle of the night, they might get paid a visit from Bootsmen, who'd either crawl out from the closet or under their beds and whisk them away into the shadows, never to be seen again. Medieval style parenting at its finest. Ancient Mesopotamia is known for being the birthplace of writing and subsequently recorded history. Its people, the Sumerians, also built the world's first cities and developed the oldest known political and administrative systems. While these advancements did and still do set the civilization apart from many others, it does not mean that they were exempt from the presence of haunting legends designed to understand the world and, in some cases, scare the younger generations. One example of this is Gidim, or the Death Spirit. In ancient Mesopotamia, it was believed that when a person died, they could still appear to the living in the form of a Gidim, so long as their remains were being taken care of by the living on Earth. The belief shaped the way Sumerians and other Mesopotamian civilizations cared for their dead. In order to maintain a connection to the Gidim of the deceased, they would adorn burial sites with offerings and gifts, which would allow the Gidim version of their loved ones to thrive in the afterlife. Graves left barren resulted in Gidims eating nothing but dust and becoming trapped in a sort of purgatory realm. The idea of mortality in life after death was as difficult then to comprehend as it is now, and so this ritual allowed the living to continue to care for their lost loved ones in the hopes of them one day appearing in the form of a Gidim, which could be called upon at any time with the use of a summoning ritual. Whether or not that ritual actually worked is an answer unfortunately lost to ancient history. Another legend stemming from the Sumerian civilization in Mesopotamia that supports the idea of Gidims is the legend of Enkidu, mythological wartime comrade and friend of Gilgamesh and the former king of Uruk. In the legend, Enkidu is dead, living inside of a rather desolate afterlife where he is being held prisoner. No Knowing the fate of his friend, Gilgamesh prays for the release of Enkidu from the realm, a request granted by the sun god who returns Enkidu to earth. When Gilgamesh asks about the afterlife, Enkidu begins describing his dreary existence of being deceased, forced to survive off dirt, and not being able to participate in adult activities. Don't know why he added that, but apparently it was important. But he continued on to say that the conditions varied and that they were actually dependent upon the life a person lived prior to their death. Those who had seven or more children were quite comfortable in the afterlife because of the fact that they had plenty of living relatives supplying their grave sites with food and drink. Those who had less children had less comfortable lives, but were still nowhere near as uncomfortable as the childless, who were condemned to starve and endure everlasting loneliness. Furthermore, Enkidu described the differences in conditions for people who were kind in life and respected the teachings of their elders and those who were not. With those who were and did having quite comfortable afterlives and those who weren't and did not eating nothing but dirt and existing in complete isolation. I wonder what kind of person Enkidu was to earn himself such a negative experience in his albeit brief afterlife. The Naklave is a creature from Scottish folklore, specifically from the Orkney Islands. Uh, this thing is about as terrifying and gnarly looking as it gets. So imagine this horse-like demon with no skin, all its muscles and veins are exposed, and not only that, but it has this human-like torso growing out of its back. The two things are just kind of fused together in this fleshy monstrosity. The creature is said to be very tall and has a horrible decaying face. It lives in the sea or marshlands and comes out to cause trouble and spread disease. In some stories, it's responsible for droughts or crop failures as well, and people believe that if the new clave was near, it meant something terrible was going to happen to the land or to the people living there. One of the more chilling parts of the legend is that the new clave can control the weather. If it's angry, it can bring storms and make the sea rough, which was 
especially frightening back in the day for people who relied so much on fishing. The Amarok is a creature from Greenlandic Inuit mythology, and for a long time it was considered nothing more than a myth until an incident in the 19th century. In Inuit folklore, the Amarok is described as a giant wolf, renowned for its enormous size and strength. According to the tales, this wolf is said to hunt alone, especially at night, preying on those who violate traditional taboos or are foolish enough to be outside in the dark. In the 19th century, the perception of the Amarok actually changed from being nothing more than folklore to possible reality. So a creature fitting the description of the legendary wolf was shot, described as a truly immense pure white wolf. The hunter who killed the creature sent its pelt to the Copenhagen Museum in Denmark, and this was seemingly concrete evidence of the existence of a massive white wolf in the Arctic region. Now, whether this thing was actually the legendary Amarok or just an especially large wolf remains to be seen, but if you ever find yourself in Denmark, Check out the museum for yourself. Maybe that pelt is still on display. The tale of the Haugbui comes from ancient Icelandic and Norse folklore, civilizations that had a very different perspective on spirits and the afterlife. They believed that spirits did not ascend or descend to any kind of heaven or hell like realms, but rather they remained in the bodies of the deceased until said bodies became disturbed. Because of this, ancient Nordics and Icelanders took great care and many precautions when burying their dead. Deceased members of the community were buried with their toes tied together and needles in their feet. Furthermore, because these civilizations believed that a deceased person could only enter a home from the door which they left, when the corpse was removed from a home, the entrance from which they left was promptly sealed up to protect against any kind of re-entry. And now a creature from Zimbabwean folklore, the Kangamato. Descriptions of this creature vary somewhat, but most accounts agree that it's this big, nasty bird or bat with a wingspan that can rival your typical Cessna plane. Reports often mention a beak full of sharp teeth. It's usually depicted looking almost like a pterodactyl. Locals in Zambia and Zimbabwe have been talking about the Kongamato for ages. The name itself translates to breaker of boats in the local language, which doesn't exactly inspire warm and fuzzy feelings. One of the reasons this cryptid stands out is because it's not just something that lurks in the depths of some dense forest somewhere. No, instead the Kongamato supposedly likes to crash parties near rivers and lakes. It's said to have a thing for feasting on unsuspecting folks who dare to venture too close to the water's edge. So imagine trying to enjoy a peaceful picnic or a birthday party, and then suddenly you're in a scene from Jurassic Park. The Japanese legend of Baku, the dream-eating spirit animal, has been around far longer than you or I. But unlike the subjects of all the other legends on this list, the Baku is actually a malevolent spirit that looks kind of like a tapir, a pig-shaped animal with a long snout, and this spirit eats nightmares. While this legend is incredibly popular in Japan, the story of the Baku actually started in China prior to the 14th century. And in some versions of this legend, in order to invoke the protection of the spirit, who has also been described as having the legs of a tiger, the head of an elephant, and the piercing eyes of a rhinoceros, one must draw a picture of the spirit before falling asleep. Now, after learning about all of these other haunted legends, I think I know what I'll be doing tonight. The Kajanok is a cryptid creature said to inhabit the shallow bays and lakes of Greenland and the Canadian Arctic. It's described as a colossal aquatic arachnid, which uh, certainly conjures up some pretty terrifying images. It's said to patiently wait for prey on the seabed near shoals and inlets, chomping at seals as they swim overhead. The giant sea spider depiction is often more common for the Canadian Inuit, drawing comparisons to the appearance of a huntsman spider, but on a much grander scale, obviously. A kayaker near Baffin Island in the early 20th century claimed to have witnessed this creature. Venturing into western Greenland, the Kajanok is described as more of a sea scorpion around the size of a rowboat. Lakes Natsilik and Umanak are said to be its home. Which version of this creature would you prefer to meet? Giant sea scorpion or giant spider? Take your pick. 
They're both bad, but I think a spider looking thing would be much creepier to me. And finally, we have the ancient Japanese legend of Nu, a mythical creature with the body of a tiger, the face of a monkey, and the tail of a snake, said to be the harbinger of sickness and bad luck. The Nu are not new at all. In fact, they are some of the oldest creatures described in Japanese legend, with some tales of the beast dating all the way back to the 12th century. In the tale of Haikei, a Japanese story about the ancient 12th century war, the Nu was said to have visited the Emperor of Japan, who became ill not long after. Furthermore, after the visit, every time the Emperor closed his eyes, he was bombarded with vicious nightmares. The ailments and torment continued until one day a brave soldier fired an arrow at the Nu and killed it. To this day, it's believed by some that the mound at the shore of the sea in Japan is the final resting place of the fearsome beast. What uh, creepy legends and creatures do you have from your backgrounds? Yeah, yeah. Let's know share them the down below. Yeah. With all that said, we've been your hosts, James. Hannah. We'll catch you next time. Cheers, friends.